All right, this is Unit 2, Lesson 6, and a video lesson. Um, in this lesson, we are looking at graphs and connecting them to stories, um, whether the story is given and we're matching it to a graph, or if we're writing the story based on what we're seeing in the graph. Um, so for this first graph, we're told that every morning Tom walks along a straight road from his home to a bus stop. The graph shows his journey on one particular day. So the first thing we're seeing is that the y-axis is his distance from home, and the x-axis is the time of his trip. So what we're noticing is uh, that we see a lot of increasing, decreasing, constant intervals, much like what we were used to seeing in Lesson 5. So we see that we start off here, then we're increasing, then we're decreasing, then we're increasing, then we're constant. Okay, and what we're going to be asked to do in this question is to describe what might have happened along this journey um, and, and how fast he walked. Um, the how fast question, that's a little bit new for us. But what I'm seeing on this graph is that from 0 to 50 seconds, he seems to be increasing his distance from home. So from 0 to 50... Tom is walking away from home, which you would imagine is to the bus stop. So that's the first thing I notice. Now, it looks like Tom changes directions in the second chunk of the graph, changes directions from 50 to 70 seconds, and starts walking back towards home, because you see that his distance from home is decreasing, which must mean he's going back towards home. So from 50 to 70 seconds, Tom is walking back home. I'm guessing that this probably means, because it doesn't look like he got all the way home, because all the way home would be at zero um, distance from home. I'm guessing he dropped something along the way um, earlier, and he walked back during this time interval to go pick up the thing. So is walking back home. He is picking up something he dropped. Okay, now we look at this time interval from 70 to 90, or sorry, 70 to 100, 70 on the x to 100 on the x. This time interval, his, in, his distance is increasing again, and he's walking faster now because you notice he goes from 40 up to 160, which is an increase of 120 um, meters in just 30 seconds where in the first 50 seconds, he went from 0 to 100. Um, so he actually covered more distance in less time, which must mean he's moving faster. I'd say he might, he might be running right now because maybe he's worried about being late for the bus. From 70 to 100, Tom runs to the bus stop. And then finally, from 100 to 120, he's not moving anymore. We don't see him moving. He's constant. His distance isn't changing. I'm guessing he's waiting at the bus stop for the bus to pick him up. So from 100 to 120, Tom waits at bus stop. Okay? And um, that, so what I kind of included here when it says include how fast he walked, I called it walking at the beginning and running um, in that faster interval. Um, something visually that you can see here is that this section is steeper 
than this section. It's a little bit taller. And when that's happening, it means that something's changing faster. They're moving faster during that interval. Okay? So now we move on to a second example. Okay? We've got these different segments for this delivery truck um, driving down a straight road to make a delivery. So we see that its distance, again, this is like distance from its starting point. His distance is increasing here in section A. Then it looks like it's constant in section B. Looks like it's increasing again in section C. Looks like it's staying constant in section D. And it looks like it is decreasing in section E. So they say, what do you think D represents? Well, if I'm just looking at this graph and starting to tell a story, this time for which his um, distance is increasing, kind of this area, I would imagine he's out making a delivery. He's out getting further away from his, his um, station, wherever he started, until he gets to his point of delivery. And then this time where he's decreasing, I think, is when he's driving back home to the station. Okay? So segment D is a time where he's constant. He's not moving. Um, what I think is happening here, since this is the change, D is the point where he um, changes from increasing in C to decreasing in E. I think this is when he's stopped making his delivery. Because he's out of the truck and delivering whatever he has to deliver, there's a period of two hours where he's not moving, and I think that's what it is. Truck is making delivery. So he's taking things out and, and delivering them to wherever he was supposed to go. Segment E, I would say that he's driving back to the station. The truck is driving back to station, wherever he started. Segment C, they ask, does segment C represent going up a steep hill? Well, not necessarily. Just because the graph is going up doesn't mean that the truck is changing its elevation. It just means that the truck is driving further away. As the distance from home increases, that's what's going on. It's increasing. As the distance from home increases, that means that the truck's just driving away. So no, this does not necessarily represent that. Doesn't mean he's not, but it definitely doesn't guarantee that he's uh, rep he's going up a hill. No, it doesn't. Okay. How fast was the truck driving during segment E? Okay. Well, for speed, we typically say like miles per hour. And segment E goes from 7 to 11 hours. So that means that he's going four hours worth of driving and in that time he went from eight miles away from home down to zero miles away from home so he is um, driving eight miles in four hours he is not moving fast this must be like a ice truck driver um, in Alaska, making a very difficult delivery because he is not moving fast at all. Eight miles in four hours, which you could say is two miles per hour. Number five, over what intervals is the graph increasing? We talked about this. That's A and C. A and C are the intervals for which the graph is increasing, where it's going up. Uh, interval notation, we'd say 0 to 2 and 3 to 5, but when they have labels, we'll just call it A and C. Oh, sorry, they say express it in interval notation. So A is from 0 on the x-axis to 2 on the x-axis, so 0 to 2. And um, C was the other spot, and that was from 3 on the x-axis to 5 on the x-axis, so 3 to 5. Those are our two intervals. Uh, over what intervals is the graph constant? Okay, well, constant, we're seeing that that's happening at B and at D. The, the truck's not moving during those times. The, the graph is flat. 
and B goes from 2 to 3. And D goes from 5 to 7 on the x-axis, 5 to 7. So D is 5 to 7. And then it says, that over what intervals is it decreasing? And I would use E here. E is the only one where it's decreasing. And E is going from 7 to 11. They ask us, what's the maximum value of this graph? So very much the same questions as our increasing, decreasing max. They're asking us, what's the maximum value of this graph? And I believe that is happening up here at D. That's the, further, the tallest this graph ever gets at a height of 8. So that's 8. And what's going on at this 8? What does that 8 represent? Um, that is how far he ever gets away from home. 8, 8 miles is how far away the delivery was. So that's the meaning when they ask what does it represent. Something that surprises me is they never asked about what's going on at B. I think he's making a, a pit stop. I think he's stopping or making a second delivery, but I think he's stopping to rest or making a second delivery. He's stopping there, but that's not his final destination because he doesn't turn around after he stops there for an hour. Um, it looks like D is that final destination. All right, we've got one more question to do, and this is matching a graph to a story. Okay, so first of all, I just kind of want to interpret what's going on. Okay. In this story, I like to label these little key changing points. Okay, It looks like whoever this is, is quickly, because it's a little steeper, they're quickly getting away from home. They're going somewhere. Okay, Now they slow down in this section, because it's less steep, it's flatter. So now they slow down, but they're still going away from home. They're, they're still increasing. Their distance is still going up. And then... They are um, at a relatively fast speed, hard to compare. They're going back home, okay? So now let's read these stories. Tom took his dog for a walk to the park. He set off slowly and then increased his pace. So that means he started off slow and then went fast. Well, that's not true. It looks like he started off fast and then went slow and then went home. Okay, so I don't agree with A. He didn't start off slow and then pick up his speed. B says Tom rode his bike east from his home uh, up a steep hill. After a while, the slope eased off. At the top, he raced down to the other side. Okay, so he rode his bike from home uh, up a steep hill. With, and after a while, the slope eased off. Well, if it starts off steep and it's difficult up the hill, I know that's what this graph looks like. But think about it, if you're going up a hill, you're going to go slower. So he would have started slow, and then when the slope eased off, meaning it wasn't so steep, the hill he was going up, he'd probably go faster. So again, I disagree. This is kind of implying he went slow, then fast, where the grass says fast, then slow. So let's check the first or the last one. Tom went for a jog. At the end of the road, he bumped into a friend, and his pace slowed. So he started fast, then he slowed down. And then after he left his, his friend, he went back home. Okay, that's exactly what this is, sh is showing. He went fast, then he went slow, and then he went home. So C would be our correct answer. Okay, and that's it for this lesson.